you, you you've mentioned that is it the city of Norfolk? Is it is it uh, is it the entire region? Is it a specific city um, <clears throat> that that's helping? But uh, I think historically, when you go to a government organization, you go to a, a specific municipality, they are really like uh, red flags, roadblocks. They make it really difficult uh, to to work with them. It, it, did something change? Like, like what, what, what has made this situation so appealing for these companies to be able to work in to, so that they can get the access that they need to? I think it's, uh, you're solving their problem because we started with their problem. But you don't think that because they pitched it as a thing? Yeah, we, we, we go to them every year or we're constantly saying, look, what's your problem? And uh, we don't know how much water is in our storm or stormwater pipes. Or, or we don't know what's in our, you know, uh, we don't know what our stormwater system is doing at any particular time uh, for a given condition. Well, so we brought a company in that put sensors in the stormwater, uh, uh, they put uh, 40 sensors uh, in the stormwater uh, system. And boom, here's what it's doing. And here's what happens in a storm event. And here's what happens in a heavy rainfall event. And this is what's happening. And, and some of your pipes are 50% full on a sunny day. So we're solving their problem. So you can, you know, we, we go back to them and say, you told us you got this problem. Well, here's, here's a solution that we think, I mean, we, we check it out before we decide to fund the company, but we bring in, we bring in them solutions. And I would think to add on that, you're probably bringing them solutions that doesn't require like really, really extensive infrastructure modernization. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because that's sort of the, the Army Corps type of project thing where we're not, we're not that. We're not the, the, the new pump station or the, the new stormwater pipe. So we're helping, helping you deal with what you got. And so um, it's, it's sort of appealing that way. There, there is a cost to the, the, the cities, the municipalities to, you know, to interact with the project, but that's, uh, we, we try and keep that to a minimum. Yeah, it's interesting to hear the, the sensor thing with um, storm, um, storm water, storm drains. And I, I recall the city of Norfolk uh, specifically, you know, talking about their storm drains and the water drains always backing up and, you, and, and, and the flooding due to that uh, being smaller uh, in diameter, I guess, piping. Um, and so to actually get answers like that saying, hey, you're at 50 percent, you know, and, and I guess this. I, I'm interested in what, what was the solution in something like that? Uh, what was it just <laughs> repipe the city? Like how, how, how do they take that information? Hey, there's sensors in here. You know what it is. Like what, what do they do next? So I, I think, I, I think it's, it's awareness of uh, here's the situation now. Here's what's going to, here's the, what the weather's going to be in two days and put two and two mm -hmm. together and, and there's going to be a problem over here. And uh, the, you, know, you only... do normally know where all the stuff's going to happen, right? I mean, you know, those underpasses that are going to yeah. flood that people can jump into, like it's a, a deep and a swimming pool, then they land on a, uh, on a vehicle. I'm sure you guys have seen that. It's the most ridiculous thing ever. People think that they can float into those yeah. things, but like, yeah. it is cool to hear something like that. Yeah. I mean, there's only so much you can do without digging it up and, and redoing the, the, uh, the infrastructure, but it's an awareness and it's, um, Maybe there there are some things that the city can do in terms of pumping out some of the uh, uh, some of the storage areas that they have prior to a storm when they know that something's going to happen. Sure. You know, so the, and it, and it so, could be a win win win. I mean, instead of like building multi million dollar houses right on the water or businesses right on the water, I mean, it's okay if you put parks and running yeah. paths and biking paths so that when there is flooding, you know, that that's not going to wipe out buildings and houses and costs millions What's, of dollars to replace. So, so that's right. And part of the, the benefits of this storm sensor project has been that the, uh, the area near Tidewater Gardens in downtown Norfolk is being redeveloped. And the information that comes from these sensors, which, is, which are distributed through that area, has helped the designers in that redevelopment. So they now know what is not working and what really what needs to be changed. So there is a way that the city then can, can take this information and say, we got to redo, we got to do this differently or redo this, or, or as you say, like get away from the hardscape. That's one of the biggest problems in urban environments is all of the hardscape and then 
meaning impervious, meaning as meaning parking lots, really. Yeah, right, they need right. grass so that it'll run. Well, just as, yeah. as we were talking uh, before we pressed the record button, we were talking about Langley Air Force Base. And Paul, you spent time there and I spent time there. And it was just uh, so pick a, a, nor, a nor'easter or a hurricane. And it was always like, OK, this part of the base was just wiped out because it's literally yeah. nine feet above sea level. And all we would do is just continue to pump money into the base and just repair what was damaged as opposed mm. to if we, we know it's just going to continue to happen over and over and over again. And so uh, that's almost like the definition of insanity, thinking that we would just repair this thing and then the same thing happens over and over and over again. Yeah, we got we got to do something different. Yeah, but there are ways to, you know, if 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 all you're doing is paving over it, right, then you're going to have the same problem. But if, exactly, you know, I, I really I mean, this doesn't sound very uh, quick or or, or, or or high tech, but, you know, trees and uh, grasslands, they're. Um, they're what can help out in uh, in uh, stormwater management. Plus, they they improve the quality of life. Right. So, how do you how is climate defined? Because I I feel like it could be a lot of different things. Like when when Tim, you're talking about the billion dollars of active capital into climate, and, and Paul, just everything with rise. Like, how is climate um, defined in this in this setting in this industry? So we try and keep away from um, using any specific models or predictions. We know that um, we know that we flood locally, and we know that the severity is, is, and the the occurrences are increasing. But we don't really rely on uh, any one particular model or prediction or, or, or definition there, and. Um, we, what we're trying to focus on, I, I, I don't mean to dodge the question, but I, but we really don't, um, we don't look at all the different models. We we know roughly what the problem is and what all the other coastal communities are going to be facing. So we don't focus too much on that other than that it's it's an increasing, in, it's, a, it's a threat that's increasing in severity and frequency. Yeah, and it, and it and all some of it so much of it ties in together uh, that I don't know the whole thing's really really fascinating. Uh, yeah, I mean, what, I can... what one of the you know we, there are significant problems, and part of the climate thing is not directly associated, but we see it all the time is the level of plastics that we have everywhere, and uh, I mean. Obviously, the manufacture of those uh, contributes to um, uh, to pollution in, in many ways, but just the fact that you can't get rid of them, plus the fact that they're in our waterways, plus the fact that they block our stormwater system and they get in the way and they are unsightly and they're not going anywhere. I mean, there's there are a number of different different ways, and 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 litter is a it's a resilience problem because floatables, meaning plastic. Uh, bottles uh, and containers uh, gum up the stormwater system like nothing on it, like like nothing else. They're big, they float, and they get stuck. And plastics are are, are everywhere. So that's climate too. I yeah, guess. save the turtles, in, please. In <laughs> well, it's interesting, just in the sense of like yeah. from an engineering standpoint, uh, plastic was was over engineered in the sense of it doesn't it, it, it doesn't biodegrade at all. It's just it mm -hmm. takes for ever and yeah. uh, i know that our family we really really try to limit uh the, the amount of single-use plastics that we use in in our home i mean it's just uh yeah. to your point paul i mean it just yeah it just hangs around forever and ever and, and zach i mean like just even looking at a lot of people focus on sea level rise with uh the polar ice caps melting however uh, a new study that was just that just started was about all the methane gas that is being released into the atmosphere because once those ice caps melt, uh, all that biodegradation of the plants and everything that has just been trapped under there for thousands and thousands, if not millions of years. And then when the ice melts, all that methane gas is being pumped into the air and is uh, also a big so, impact on the climate. So let uh, I, would, I would turn that around a little bit because we could 
easily drive ourselves into complete depression at this point. <laughs> but, but I, I go back to you know you, you look you look back in time and and uh, you know, humans adapt. You know they they, they really do it. I, whether that's a good thing or not, I, you know that that remains to be seen. But there, there's a story about Chicago back in the turn of the century, which was overrun by horses because horses were, were the, the, the form of transportation and they were, it was overrun by horse waste everywhere in basements in piles everywhere, health hazard, quality of life hazard, big problem. And then in 10 or 15 years that all went away. And the reason for that was the internal combustion engine. And all of that horse waste, all of the horse problem went away. Now, now we're talking about the internal uh, combustion <laughs> engine. So I, I don't have the answer, but humans have really, um, in many ways, they figure out how to adapt when they have mm -hmm. to. And so, and I, I you know, ask my kids a, a, about this. They go, well, someone's going to come up with something. <laughs> and so, yeah. Uh, I, and I hope they do, and um, I hope I can invest. Seems in like it. they always do. Yeah, well, but, and I think that you know. that would be one of the positive things about uh, the position you're in. I mean, and, yeah. and I know I love entrepreneurship because I love the optimism, I love yeah. uh, the ingenuity, the the different ideas that people come up with in order to change the world in their own uh, specific way, and uh, to to run a program like yours. I mean, wow. I mean, talk about making an impact. That's uh, that would be really really cool to to hear, listen, and, and learn about what the different things people are doing. You, you know, you're, you're, you're right, Tim. And, and the fact is, and one of the things I learned is, with my company is you cannot be an entrepreneur. You cannot try and build a, a company on an idea and be a pessimist. You don't have that luxury. And so these, all of these people are, all, all the people in the, the companies we fund and, and that we talk to, they all are optimists. They all say, you know, yeah, this is a problem. But, you know, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the uh, the material that has all this nitrogen and phosphorus in there and we're going to seal it in there and build an oyster reef or a living shoreline or something like that. We're going to sequester. So the carbon is sequestered. And so these these are people who are... Uh, optimist. I've been directly involved within our entrepreneurial community for years. And the most common question I get is, Tim, I want to get involved, but I don't know what events I should attend. Well, Startwheel eliminates that pain point because we consolidate all the events you should attend into a single calendar. Now you'll be in the know and see where to spend your time. Gone is the need to search multiple websites and calendars. Just head to startwheel.org and see for yourself. That's startwheel.org.